when the war broke out, the safest place in the world would have been at an all-girls school in Davenport, Iowa. Marion Crandall volunteered to go to France, and she did it simply because she loved the French people. For her to volunteer to go into that, and we know that the, the Western Front of 1918 was maybe the worst place on earth to be. She wanted to go there. Marion Crandall was the first American woman to be killed in active service in World War I. Crandall graduated from Omaha High School, now known as Central High. She then went on to study at the Sorbonne in Paris, before returning to the States to teach at an all-girls school in Davenport, Iowa. Nearly a century later, her story was dangerously close to being forgotten. That is, until Central High teacher Scott Wilson's annual history project brought her story back to life. The students drew names out of a hat, and one of my students, Peter Bach, who was in the Central High class of 2010, a senior that year, picked the name Marion G. Crandall, and a name that's clearly on our World War I memorial. And Peter will tell you that he struggled. He wrote to the government, to wrote to the archives, and was really kind of drawing a blank in his initial research. He got a tip from a classmate. She got a hold of Peter and said, Peter, I think this, I think Marion is a woman, and I think she was a volunteer uh, in, for the Allied forces in France in World War I. Peter arranged to meet with a local Davenport historian. He got into the Special Collections Archive, at the Davenport Library, and he went to work. And the project that he created out of his research really put a light on this woman's contribution to the war effort and really her life story, which was really fascinating. In February of 1918, Crandall shipped off to France to volunteer with the YMCA. The women who volunteered through the YMCA did a number of things such as hot chocolate, lemonade, Basically, their purpose was to be a comforting presence for soldiers who had been at the front and had really been in the muck and mire of the trenches of the Western Front. It's in this German offensive of the spring of 1918 in which Marion Crandall was killed. While they were evacuating the house that she was in, Marion ordered the rest of her team out and she was the last one in the hut and was packing up the supplies when a German artillery shell came through the building. It detonated and fatally wounded her. They took her to her nearby hospital and a few hours later she died. And at that moment she became the first American woman killed at the front in World War I. Crandall was given a soldier's burial at St. Minenhold, the first woman to be buried in the cemetery among 6,000 French soldiers, a distinct honor. Her body was later moved to the Meuse Argonne Cemetery in northern France, the largest American cemetery in Europe. I'm sure that the French were impressed by a woman from the United States who had volunteered and had no obligation to be there. She impressed all of her colleagues at her memorial service. Just about everyone who commented, commented on her energy, her enthusiasm, her positive attitude. And you can imagine for the French soldiers who are coming off the line, to have someone like Marion Crandall and her colleagues around them was a huge benefit. And that had to make an impression on all those soldiers that she saw. And when she died, the respect that they gave to Marion in her funeral service demonstrates the, the kind of respect that they had for her in her short time as a volunteer at the front. While Crandall made an impression on the French soldiers of World War I, her story was largely unknown even to historians. She, at the beginning of the year, was a name. By the time Peter was done, she was a real person who had this extraordinary story of sacrifice and volunteering. 
Peter ended up going to the University of Nebraska, and while he was there, he and I worked on a nomination for Marion Crandall to the Central High School Hall of Fame. And the very next year, she went into our Hall of Fame, and Peter accepted the award. We have started taking our Central High students to Europe to study the World War I and World War II battlefields. In 2018, we decided to add a visit to Marion Crandall's gravesite at Meuse-Argonne Cemetery. Our students laid purple and white flowers at her grave. And that was really special to see students literally a hundred years after she died visiting her grave. And I think for those students, I don't want to speak for them, but I think for those students that was really felt the long history of their school that they are now a part of as well. It's easy to talk about World War I and World War II from a, a male perspective, the soldiers, the fighting, the generals, the political leaders, in those cases tended to be all men. And in this case, it's great to introduce and include stories like Marion. Women, of course, were integral parts of all of that history. And with Marion's example, we get a chance to show that women were, you know, every bit engaged. They were at the front in Marion's case. And it allows us to kind of enrich this story of the First World War by including some of our Central High history into that.